Hey everyone, Thyworm here, breaking down how damage works in Bagan Online. This video will provide you with insights on damage calculations which you can use in building your heroes. I'll dive right into it, but not before thanking Easy Mode and user n.and .and in Discord for helpful insights. The main source of information for this video was the maths page on the wiki, so also a big shout out to those people. Alright, let's break abilities down first. Abilities have both a source and a type. The source can be either a spell or an attack. The type of that spell or attack can be physical, fire, cold, poison or lightning. That means that any ability is a combination of a source and a type. Let's do a few examples to make this clear. Looking at Lucian's left mouse button ability. This has spell as a source, meaning it is a spell, and the type of spell is lightning. It's a lightning spell ability. Eastock's left mouse button ability, the sweeping strikes, are a little different as you can see. This ability is an attack with the type lightning. It's a lightning attack ability. Last example comes from Anya, the bloodsucker. This ability is a spell of the physical type. It's a physical spell or a spell with physical damage. That's a little bit unconventional because in most games spells usually do elemental damage or earth or poison damage. In Pagan Online however spells can also do physical damage. Keep that in mind. So what determines if something is a spell or an attack? Basically that is directly determined by the character you play. If you're looking at the Hero Forge you can see that heroes are either strength based or intelligence based. Strength based heroes use attacks, intelligence based heroes use spells. So here is an overview of how heroes are categorized. Most of them should come as no surprise with Istok and Kingwitch obviously being attack based characters. Valyria makes sense too I would say. Demir is displayed in the Hero Forge as an intelligence based character but that is a bug. He is in fact a strength based character. The intelligence based heroes are less obvious I feel. Morok for example uses spells, Masha as well and also Anya is considered a spellcaster. As you will soon see most of these spells are physical spells however. So when breaking this down into a spreadsheet we can see some interesting things here. You can see this information yourself by the way by just hovering over an ability and it will tell you the damage source. By now it should not surprise you which heroes use attacks and which ones use spells. That was determined by them being a strength based or intelligence based character. The second part of this table however is good to understand so let's go through the playable characters and see what they mostly use. Istok uses primarily physical attacks with the exception of the left mouse button and right mouse button which are lightning attacks not physical attacks. For King Witch it is the same. He is almost a 100% physical attack hero apart from his dash which leaves a trail of fire damage. Demir, same thing, almost completely physical attacks apart from his E ability which is that poisonous tree growing out of the ground, which is considered a poison attack. Finishing with the attack heroes, Valyria once again uses only physical attacks. So let's go to the spellcasters. Lucian uses fire and lightning spells equally basically, depending on which mouse button you click. Anya is different because while she is a spellcaster, she only uses physical spells. Masha's damage output is a bit more mixed. She mostly uses physical spells but her middle mouse button does fire damage and her ultimate ability does poison damage. Lastly, Morok, a spellcaster doing solely physical damage. So you might ask, why is this relevant? Well, for multiple reasons I would say. First, I think this provides a good overview of various damage sources across the board. You can also see that no one uses cold damage in any ability, making cold damage effectively useless. More importantly though, there's one thing that stands out and that's that basically everyone does physical damage. I mean look at it, no matter if they're casting spells or swinging attacks, almost everything is physical damage. That's the main takeaway here as we go forward to the damage calculations. Because it should come as no surprise that getting additional physical damage is a very good idea. 
This whole idea of getting physical damage is propelled by the fact that abilities do not only deal physical damage, but they also scale with physical damage. Anya's Bloodsucker, 280% physical damage, her Blood Bolt, 350% physical damage, and her ultimate, the Bleeding Heart, a whopping 420% physical damage. This is yet another reason that stacking physical damage is a huge DPS increase, both from your primary attacks with left mouse button as well as your abilities, because they directly scale with physical damage in most cases. If you're not interested in the specifics on damage calculations but still want to know how to build your character, jump to the timestamp displayed on screen or in the description to get to the summary. For those who are also interested in why something works, let's do some math. Before we start with the formula, it's good to understand that this is the formula for your left mouse button ability only. Individual other abilities are calculated according to the description of that ability, like Anya's Bloodsucker we talked about. Those calculations are really easy, you just multiply the total physical damage with the multiplier for total damage dealt on abilities. We're not going into that. Here's the damage formula, however, to calculate the left mouse button damage. It's pretty, well, complicated if you look at it like this. So let's not look at it like this, let's break it down into pieces we can understand more easily. Because I'm not a rocket scientist either and I can't read things like this. Here's the same formula again, but dissected into pieces. Still, there's quite a bit of math going on, so I've done some rough translations. The first line, the sum of all physical damage, can also be read as simply physical damage. And physical damage comes primarily from your equipped weapon and also from stats on your gear. Physical damage is then multiplied by the attack bonus damage percentage. And as I've explained in a previous video, bonus attack damage percentages are derived directly from strength and from this very stat on your gear. The result is then once again multiplied by the physical bonus damage percentage which you can only get as raw stats on your gear. There is no other way to get physical bonus damage percentages. The multiplications here are important because increasing one of these stats, as we will soon see, gives you a high boost in damage. That's because we're not just adding the stats on top of each other, no, we are multiplying them. That results in basically much higher numbers. This is also the reason why the elemental damage part of the formula is less impactful. It's not used to once again multiply the top 3 stats. No, instead it is just additional damage added to the first results, making it not very impactful in most cases. This also means that from purely a formula perspective you shouldn't emphasize much on elemental damage if your character is a physical damage dealer. And because 85% of heroes are physical damage dealers, getting elemental damage is just not a very good idea. Mathematically, as you can see, it doesn't scale all that well because we're adding the damage and not multiplying it. And also because most abilities don't scale with elemental damage, but with physical damage. So this is why elemental damage in Pagan Online, in its current state, is relatively useless. Still though, to be thorough, let me show you that elemental damage is the sum of flat elemental damage multiplied by attack bonus damage and elemental bonus damage. Time for some examples, so you can see the impact of different stats on the damage output. We start with the formula once again, and I've just filled in some numbers here. Let's assume we have 300 total flat physical damage, 200% bonus attack damage, 0% bonus physical damage, because we do not have this statistic by default. Let's also say we do 100 flat fire damage and that we have plus 50% fire damage bonus. The 200% you see over there comes from the attack bonus damage percentages which are calculated for elemental damage. Alright, before we start I've clarified this with easy mode. The way to add these percentages to flat numbers is by basically dividing the percentages by 100. That way it's not a percentage anymore but a number and you can start adding those numbers. That means that 1 plus 200% is basically 1 plus 2 which is 3 as I'm sure you know. So our top section of the formula is 300 times 3 times 1 which is 900. And the bottom section, the elemental damage section is 100 times 3 times 1.5 which is 450. 
Add those two and your total damage output is 1350 damage. And this is our baseline. This is what our left mouse button ability would do in terms of damage. Let's add 100 strength. 100 strength equals 20% bonus attack damage and a bit of crit damage too but I will ignore that for now. Here we have our base values again. Adding 100 strength therefore changes the formula a little bit. I'm going to do these calculations a bit faster because by now you should get the idea I'd say. So the top section becomes 300 times 3.2 times 1 which is 960 and bottom part is 100 times 3.2 times 1.5 which is 480. Total damage is 1440 so we gained 90 damage compared to the baseline. Let's add 100% bonus attack. This gives a significant change because the 200% bonus damage goes to 300% bonus damage. Calculations put the top section at 1200, the bottom section at 600, meaning a total damage of 1800. That's 450 more than the baseline. Let's add 100% physical bonus damage. Previously we had 0, now we have 100%. Top section becomes 1800 damage. Bottom section is still at 450 because physical damage bonus doesn't impact elemental damage calculations. Total damage is 2250 damage output, 900 more than the baseline. Adding flat physical damage changes the 300 into 400. Calculations show the top half at 1200, bottom half still at 450, meaning a total of 1650 damage output, 300 more than the baseline. Putting this all in a small list, we get the following results. Please note that for intelligence based characters, the exact same calculations apply but then with spell damage instead of attack damage bonuses and intelligence instead of strength. But just swap those two values and all your calculations are the same. So back to the list. Based on this, you would say that bonus physical attack percentages are clearly the winner, right? Not entirely. It is a bit more nuanced, which I can show you by using some simple math once again. Instead of seeing flat physical damage and bonus physical damage as two separate things, it's better to regard them together as total physical damage. Because one doesn't work well without the other. It's not optimal to have huge amounts of flat physical damage but no bonuses to flat physical damage. And vice versa as well, a huge bonus physical damage stat is not very impactful on low physical damage numbers. To illustrate this, I've written down a small example. 300% bonus physical damage on 100 flat physical damage gives you a total physical damage of 300. However, if you balance both statistics, making it 200 flat physical damage with a 200% bonus physical damage, the result is 400 instead of 300, significantly more. So think about this and apply it when gearing your character. The most optimal total physical damage is a balance between flat physical damage and bonus physical damage, ideally in a 1 to 1 ratio, because that will yield the highest numbers. So with this in mind, there's a rule of thumb for damage. First, focus on physical damage, total physical damage, both flat and bonus physical damage, like I just mentioned. Then, depending on your hero, get some attack bonus damage or spell bonus damage, because it scales with both the physical calculations, but also with the elemental calculations. After that, get some crit damage if you want. But the main reason crit damage is here and the main reason I haven't really covered it is because raw strength and raw intelligence are just so bad. They're so bad, as we've seen in our formula breakdown, that you're better off getting some crit than to get strength or intelligence. But now at least you also know why. I know this was long, but hopefully it provided you with the tools to start optimizing your damage output to give you the concepts on how damage works and to give you insight in how you can try out new builds for characters. If you don't want to do all the math yourself like I've just done for informational purposes, there is this great tool that I will link in the description down below. It's a damage calculator created by Sentinita on Discord. I've done some testing with it myself and it works really well, so check that out. Subscribe for more guys and thanks for so vigorously subscribing and watching the videos. I've been on YouTube for almost 5 years but this game has renewed my creative side and given my channel a huge boost. I'm very grateful for that and I'm very grateful for the support. See you all next time, bye bye.